All right, so let's add a new data connection to our app. So the first thing we think about when we do this is uh, where is our endpoint? So in this case, we prepared a very simple one. Let's head on over to it. So as you can see, it's a very simple JSON blob. We have a list of uh, smart devices here. So as you can see, we have lights, we have a status on them, if they're on or not. If you scroll down, we have other things. We have our speaker, uh, and then we have a lock, beds, and then we have, again, statuses of different devices. For example, for the bed, we have hours slept, the sleep quality, the leg rest angle, head rest angle. And this is all simulated data in this case. We just made it static just to keep the example simple. But in a real scenario, you would expect a real-time data stream. And you're more than welcome to use this data point as you work through this example yourself. I've posted the link at the bottom. And at this point, let's head on over to our iTwin app and connect it to this endpoint. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just create a new class to keep things clean. So let's go ahead and create a new file. Let's call it Smart Device API. And let's uh, define our class here, Smart Device API. And what we'll do is let's add just one method to it. Keep it simple. Let's make it public, static, and we'll add async for our request. Let's call it get data. And what we'll do in this is let's create a basic HTTP request. We'll do our uh, fetch and simply pass in our endpoint. And that should do it really. At this point, we can get our device data from our response uh, JSON. And let's return the device data. Perfect, now let's go ahead and test this out using a console log. Let's head on over to our on iModel connected function. Where is it? There it is. And let's just simply log our smart device API. So let's do smart device API dot get data. And we'll need to add an await here. Hit save, head on over to our app. Wait for it to load. And we have our data right here. We got a timestamp, we have our bed, garage, we got jacuzzi, a washer. So we got all our smart device data. We have all the lights here. Uh, and then we have uh, the actual data, the statuses as well. Now this is where the fun begins. Now what we have to do up next is take this device data that we just got and start adding some markers and highlighting our devices and also show statuses on a tooltip. But the question is, let's say we are looking at a bed. How do we know which bed this data belongs to? So the way that works is uh, we can see there's this ID called uh, bed001. Now that's uh, the smart device ID. I don't know if you remember that, but if we take a flashback to our iModel console and uh, rerun the query that we worked on in chapter two, that's the biz chapter, if you remember, we got a list of all our smart devices. So if you revisit that list, we can see that we have a smart device type and then we have the smart device ID. So over here, you can see the, the different beds and the smart device IDs uh, for all the beds. Now, this is a very key principle here. What this ID is, is the same ID that matches up with our smart device data endpoint. And then this ID is associated with this EC instance ID and the EC instance ID is the ID of the actual physical bed within the I model. The reason this is so important to understand is because this is the most common thing you are going to want to look for when you first load in your design data into your I model. The question you ask yourself is, which property can I use within the I model that's going to help me connect with the external database? And once you have that association between the model side and the new connection, you can finally start overlaying stuff on top of your model to visualize this data in an intelligent and immersive way. And that is what we're gonna do in our next chapter. We have all our data prepped up. We have that connection between the EC instance IDs of the elements and the actual smart device data. So let's start adding some cool features to our app now.